This tutorial will show you how to finish the raw edges of your quilt by machine sewing binding and then hand stitching it down. The most important thing is your walking foot. Sometimes people try to use a presser foot and that will really pinch and pull the fabric through the machine and you won't get the nice clean finish to your quilt that you deserve at this point. So here I have my binding and I cut two and a quarter inch strips and I folded it in half and I pressed it with my iron. And now that gives me this nice roll of fabric. So it's raw on one end and I have this crease on the other edge. So now I take my quilt and I start halfway through one side of the quilt. I take my binding and you'll see that I'm about eight inches from the edge of my binding and I pin it to the edge of my quilt. Right there. Now I put my needle down. And I can take my pin out because it was really just keeping it in place for me to put my needle down. And I do a couple stitches forward and a couple stitches back. And that locks my stitch in. So when it comes time to sealing the, to sewing the edges together, I uh, won't be ripping and pulling. It'll be locked in. So now I'm just going to go around the entire quilt and I'm gonna sew this quarter inch seam. And it's not a race, so just go as slowly as you need to. No need to pin or baste or use clips or anything like that. You just use your fingers and keep your needle down. That way when you have to adjust your binding along the edge, it doesn't move too much. Now, as you can see, I'm getting to the corner of my quilt. So I'm going to continue on sewing my quarter inch seam and then I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to place it a quarter inch from that edge and I'm going to sew to the pin. Now you don't want to sew on top of the pin because you might hit it with your needle and get a needle in the eye. But I want to sew right to it and then take it out. My needle's down and I'm going to lock that stitch. So give it a couple stitches back, a couple stitches forward. So we're going to cut it. Now I'm going to rotate my quilt so that the binding side is on the top and this raw edge is on the right. And I'm going to take this binding and I'm going to fold it so I get this 45 degree angle. And you'll see that my raw edges are lining up. I have my raw edge of my binding and I have my raw edge of my quilt. And that's lining up to make a perfectly straight line. Now I'm gonna fold it back toward me. So it makes this beautiful crease. See, and that's exactly what you want. So now I'm just going to eyeball it. And I'm gonna start at a quarter inch put my foot down, put my needle down. I'm going to lock that stitch so I do a couple stitches up and then a couple stitches back. And then I'm just going to keep sewing along. You've now sewn your binding all around the perimeter of your quilt and you're left with these two raw edges. I'm leaving about 10 inches of space between these two edges so I have some wiggle room to connect them. So I take my left side and I'm going to fold it back just like this. 
I'm going to press with my fingers so I get a nice little crease in there. I'm going to take my right side and I'm going to do the same thing and you'll see that I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch between the two. And I'm going to finger press it so I get a nice little crease. So I have that quarter inch. So now I'm going to take a pin and with my left side, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to insert this pin right where my two creases intersect, this vertical and this horizontal. I'm going, to in, I'm going to place my pin on the wrong side of the fabric. So left, wrong. Now I'm going to take my right side. And I'm going to place my pin where the two creases intersect on the right side of the fabric. So right is right. Now I'm going to connect the two. And you will see that I have this nice perpendicular intersection. I have my two creases lining up and I have these creases lining up. So I'm going to take another pin. I'm going to make sure those creases are still lining up and you can tell I have a pin in my mouth. I'm going to place this pin right here. I'm going to take another pin. I'm going to place it right here because I'm going to sew a 45 degree seam. I'm going to make a nice diagonal seam because I think that really hides the seam really well and it kind of blends in with the binding. It's better than just a really blunt horizontal seam. So now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. So now I'm going to take that seam that we created. I'm going to be really gentle with it because it's a little bit awkward. I'm going to put it right on this where those two fabrics intersect. I'm going to make sure that that is underneath my foot. And then I'm going to eyeball it. See, I just see it's going to go perfectly diagonal just like that. So now I'm just going to go slowly. And I'm going to make sure I hit the center mark as well. take out my two pins and you can see how it just kind of how it pops together perfectly just like that so once I trim everything it's going to be this beautiful diagonal seam that no one's even going to see now you can see that I've trimmed the seam so that it has a quarter inch seam allowance right there and I have cut those pesky little dog ears off so it's going to fit really nicely. I'm pressing this seam open with my fingers and then I'm just going to kind of press that top seam, that top edge closed. And you can see that because we left that quarter inch seam at the beginning when we were connecting our edges, everything is perfectly flat and lining up well. So now I'm going to take about three pins and I'm just going to pin this down because I would hate for it to pucker right at the very end when I know that it's just so perfect. Now I'm going to place my foot right where my seam ended before and I'm going to hit needle down and lock that stitch in. So we're going to have a couple stitches up and then a couple stitches back. And then I'm going to go very slowly. And I'm not going to sew over this pin. I'm going to take it out right before I hit it. And then I'm going to back stitch and then stitch forward. And you are finished tacking down your binding. So the next step is going to be folding it over and pinning it down. 
Now that you have your binding tacked onto your quilt, I'm going to show you how to sew this by hand. Now basically, you are going to be folding it over and tacking it down with a needle and thread. I use these Clover GoldenEye embroidery needles, and I'm not too picky about the size. It's whatever you prefer. And I'm also going to be using Aurifil cotton thread, and I matched it mm, pretty closely to this binding, not too closely. Because this is cotton thread, I'm also going to be using this Thread Heaven conditioner. Now you can see I've used it a lot. Um, you don't really need to use thread conditioner if you choose to use a polyester or a rayon thread because those are glossier and um, won't snag as much. But I find that cotton thread can sometimes snag and so it's nice to give it a little conditioning so it just glides through. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do a corner because that's the trickiest and I'm going to use a basic whip stitch. So I'm going to fold it over, take my needle, and I'm just going to catch just a little tiny bit and then pull it through. And I'm going to, I like my stitches pretty small. And you can see because of that thread conditioner I used that this thread is just gliding through. It's not snagging even though I'm not being very careful with it. This binding fabric is a really nice Liberty of London if you are curious. Now, just so this isn't as boring as seeing paint dry, I'm gonna get to this corner. Okay. So, I'm going to fold the other side of this corner down so I get that 45 degree angle again. Oops. Can you see how nice that looks? So I'm going to take my thread and I'm gonna go up that 45 degree angle and tack it down so it doesn't have a weird pocket. This has been a Suzy Quilts tutorial showing you how to sew binding onto your quilt.